Welcome to this week's edition of Mountain Outhouse News. I'm your host, Jam Jam. This is the crazy to happen in running this week. This week's stories include, Ricky completes his San Fran run, Pete runs 10,000 miles for the year, and you, Roy Ballots, are out. This week, Ricky Gates completed his every single street project in the city of San Francisco. Over the past 46 days, Ricky ran a total of 1,303 miles and accumulated over 147,000 feet of climb, running up and down and back and forth every single street within the city limits. This included Treasure Island, halfway across the Bay Bridge from San Francisco to Oakland, and the length of the Golden Gate Bridge. As you can see in his Strava heat map of his effort, it is quite a thing of beauty. As for my own project of running every single street in my zip code, well, I've tabled that to 2019. Does this inspire you, or would it just drive you mad? After his trans transcontinental run, and now this, I'm super curious. What's next for Mr. Gates? The annual Ultra Runner of the Year ballots are out. This annual ranking of the best ultra runners in North America is hosted by Ultra Running Magazine and proctored by none other than Tropical John Medinger. And guess what? Your boy Jam Jam is one of the esteemed panelists this year. So, let the bribes start rolling in. Actually, there are quite a few guidelines we must follow as panelists. This could help put the whole thing into perspective as it can be easy to become all keyboard warrior this time of year, especially with the stress of the holidays. First, let's get one thing crystal clear. FKTs are not up for discussion, so don't even go there. There will be a separate FKT of the year ranking taking place in March, so hold those thoughts. Next, this is obviously an extremely difficult task to compare across the sport as it's quite diverse. From fast 50Ks to mountain hundreds to six day events and beyond, there are a lot of inspiring and amazing events out there, but how do you say one is better than the other? Obviously, a tough task. When considering the highly esteemed Ultra Runner of the Year, we've been asked to take into consideration the runner's full body of work for the entire year, especially looking at performances in significantly competitive events where many elites are racing, as well as head-to-head -head competition amongst top competitors. There's also the component of versatility. There are no requirements that a runner must excel at all distances and surfaces, but that is obviously more impressive and could garner more points. DNFs. These are noted on the official ballot sheet, but specifics on how to judge those are left up to each individual panelist. The panelists themselves were not revealed, but a few here and there have come out publicly. Well, that's my update for now. Happy balloting for all you panelists out there. And if you have some opinions on runner or performance of the year, leave your thoughts in the comments below. It was a rather quiet race weekend around the US and even world as most people are gearing up for the holidays. There were a handful of local and regional U ultras scattered across the US, but nothing that really jumped out at me personally this week. However, we did have a couple notable FKTs in the news this go around. First, we gotta thank Michael Carson for pointing out this one and bringing it to light. It's close to his heart as he's, the, as he's the current FKT holder of the Joshua Tree Traverse in California. It is a 37 mile point to point run along the California Riding and Hiking Trail. The one way journey took him four hours, 49 minutes back in 2017. This week we saw Sarah Kais set a new women's FKT finishing just a hair over Michael's time in five hours, 17 minutes. This route is basically done unsupported style for most who have a finish time. Sarah reported that there are mile markers almost every mile. And of course, I got a note that Christoph Tuscher, yeah, he's the guy that did the quad double crossing of the Grand Canyon, has the out and back record here in 19 hours, 23 minutes. Next up, we head to Northern Scotland for the Cape Wrath Trail. This is a bit more of a serious one as it's over 242 miles long and more of a route than a defined trail. Actually, there's no official markings and no official line. The route travels from Fort William all the way to the most northwest point of mainland Britain. Yikes. A team of Damien Hall and Beth Pascal set a new standard of four days, nine hours, 43 minutes, self-supported style. They did lay it out there that they more or less followed the route described in the Cicerone Guidebook 2017 edition, which is an attempt to make this more of an official record, and maybe an attempt to sell more books. 
Making this trek in winter makes it even more challenging, not just because of the weather, but the extreme northern latitude means that this time of year, there's just six hours of daylight per day. Hardcore. There was a new 70 plus marathon record set by Gene Dykes. Two hours, 54 minutes, 23 seconds. The 70 year old beat Ed Whitelock's record by just 25 seconds. Hot damn, another sub three at age 70. Just wow. Magdalena Boulay traveled to Dubai to race the Al Marmoon Desert Ultra Stage Race, which is a 270 kilometer or 168 mile event. Yeah, this is the one that claimed they're the world's longest desert ultra, which they aren't exactly. Several are technically longer, but I digress. This is uh, basically similar to the MDS in style. 19 people finished in times ranging from 31 hours, 17 minutes for race winner Rashid El Marabidi, to the final finisher in 61 hours, 14 minutes. Magda won amongst the four women finishers in 37 hours, 27 minutes. Lottery season continues with UTMB now being officially open for lottery registration. I don't have time to deep dive into it this week, but stay tuned soon for an update on the whole points degradation situation going on over there. The long and short of it is that they've changed up the points system. Many races are now worth less than they were last year for some ridiculous reasons like aid stations being too frequent or multiple loop courses. I guess they just want the mandatory gear Euro model to rule the world. We're sending our best wishes to ultra runner Kyle Dietz who recently underwent brain surgery to remove a tumor that had been giving him migraine headaches for months. Kyle, of course, was an MMA fighter turned ultra runner. He had emergency surgery on the tumor and is currently recovering. If you want to support Kyle, check out his GoFundMe page linked below. This is a milestone not many runners have ever hit, nor likely will ever or likely should hit. Pete Kostelnik, who of course earlier this year ran from Alaska to Florida, will hit 10,000 miles run for the year on the day of me recording this show. He's currently at 9,978 miles, and he says he will run 22 today and live stream the finish on his Pete's Feet Across America Facebook page. Well, let's go there now. There it is. Right here. Oh, oh perfect. Yeah, 10,000 miles. All right, 10,000, Merry Christmas. So 10,000 miles in a year is a bit over 27 miles a day, just with some quick math. Wow, just wow, wow. Another annual milestone update, and sorry bro to have you go right after that story. I know, not fair. Skizzle Fresh is closing in on his 2,000 mile run quest for 2018. Skylar Hall is now at 1,839 miles as of today and is officially registered for the Across the Years 24 hour, which should give him the final push he will need to cross that mark. Stay tuned for some live coverage of that event, historic event, next week. And with that, thanks for tuning in to episode 124 about House News. Thanks for checking out the show and we'll see you next time. If you have crazy stories to share or a question or feedback for the show, please leave a comment below. If you'd like to directly support the show financially, we really appreciate you. Consider becoming a Patreon supporter of this channel or pick up this custom pair of Jam Jams unicorn sunglasses. Yeah, these are gonna go quick. So hot, so hot. Links below for all that. And as always, have a shitty week.